the visitor design pattern is likely the least loved design pattern by developers. Nobody seems to know when and how to use it. Let's change that so that you can start refactoring code with it. Let's refactor this small example so you can see why and when you can refactor code using the visitor design pattern. By the way, you can access this source code as a patron. What do we have here? We have here a small application that has the base for many activities for an HR department, okay, human resources. So when they need to do things like payroll, calculate things like equity, holidays reports, all those kind of things they should be doing on top of this infrastructure that I have here. They have here the concept of a team. A team is a list of team members that as you can see is a list of employees. An employee is an abstract class with a name and a salary. And then we use concrete types to identify the role of that employee inside of that team. As an example, we have engineer managers that beside the base properties, they also have the number of direct reports. In the way that this application has been built, every single time that HR department needs to perform a new operation, they will come into the employee class and they will add a new method that then each type of employee should implement. So we take advantage of inheritance to make sure that this logic is replicated across different types of employees. And why that is important? Because in some cases, for example, on the engineer managers, you will see that the salary is not only the base salary, but also a multiplication by the number of direct reports. There's a bonus for the manager. This approach has several problems. For example, every single time that I need to introduce a new feature on the system, I need to go to my base class and add a new method there that will be replicated across the other ones. So we have a lot of clutter inside of this base class. And also we are not respecting the open closed principle because future evolutions of this source code will be done through editing existing classes instead of adding new ones. So this is not an easy way to maintain this source code. Why refactoring this source code with the visitor design pattern? The visitor design pattern works really well with the composite. And also we have here multiple types involved in the operation. And also it's obvious to me that taking advantage of double dispatch should be useful right here. What is double dispatch? Polymorphism gives us the single dispatch, but with the visitor design pattern, we can take advantage of the double dispatch. And let's see why that is important on this case. Imagine the following scenario. You have multiple roles like engineer manager, product manager, software engineer, and another ones. And then you have different payroll benefits that apply to those roles in a different way. So when you are calculating a benefit, it's not only important to know the role of that person, but also the benefit that you are calculating. So the double dispatch represents the interaction between two different objects. And those objects will interact in a different way when they are paired with another different type of object. As an analogy, we can say that, for example, a dog will react in a different way when facing another dog or when facing a cat. Knowing those two types is important to define the behavior that you want. Let's start refactoring this thing. I will add a folder visitors and create an I employee visitor interface. And here we will create a visit method for each type of employee that we have. On the employee class, let's add an abstract method that will be the accept with the I employee visitor. The accept method will be the entry point for extending the system in the future. One important note is that I'm using the accept and the visit name for the methods, just to use the same names that are used on the Gang of Four book, but you can use the names that you prefer. Now our classes that implement the employee are complaining. So we go there and we override the accept method and we call the visit method for the visitor that you receive with the current instance of the class that you are at. So on my case, I'm doing this on the engineer manager, but let's do the same for the other ones. So I have done exactly the same for the other two classes. Let's implement our first visitor and the goal will be to implement this calculate salary. By the end, I should be able to remove all the source code from here. Let's add a new class payroll visitor, implement the I employee visitor interface, and here we will implement the behavior for each of the leaves of our composite. So we grab the source code that is inside of those classes and we move it here. So let's declare here a variable that will be holding the total salary. And then we increment that variable with the engineering manager salary, but also with the bonus that is per 
direct report. So we copy the logic from the other ones as well. You can see here that the product manager has a different logic. For example, is a percentage based on the project performance and software engineer doesn't deserve nothing more than the salary. That's not fair. So our payroll visitor is now complete. How can we use it? At the moment, the source code is going to the team. The team has a method that will call the calculate salary per each employee. You can see right here that for each team member, we will sum all the calculate salary results from the method that we are replacing now. So let's complete our refactoring and make sure that we don't broke this test. The first thing that we do is to define the payroll visitor. But now I want to visit the team. So I have two options. I either go through each element of the team or I go to my team and I implement the accept as well that will forward that visitor into each of his team members. Let's do that. So in our team, we will implement this accept method that for each team member will be accepting as well the visitor. So we are just applying the visitor to each of the members of this collection. Now in our test, we can call the accept and apply the visit. What this is doing is that when we do the accept, it will go through each element on the team accept and we'll be doing the math to calculate the total salary. So now, instead of asserting based on the result of this method, let's remove it and use the visitor.totalSalary to assert the result. Run the test and it succeeds. So now I can go to my employee, engineer manager and the team and remove the calculate salary method from that. This means that we can also move this other method into a visitor as well. So let me do that. Create a new class, phase of visitor, implement the I employee visitor interface once again and implement the behavior for each one of the leaf nodes of this composite. Same idea, I have here a, a property that I'll be using and then for each type I'm calculating the days to leave. For example, on this case, I have four bonus days. On the product manager, I have a different logic to calculate that. And on the software engineer, it's just the default annuals days off that we are adding to the total days off. Let's remove the old method from the employee. Now the other classes are complaining because they are depending on that one. So let's remove from there as well. And now I need to refactor this test because I don't have this method anymore. And we use exactly the same strategy. We define the visitor that we want to apply and we go to the team. The team accepts that visitor. It will run and then we'll get here the property with the total that we can assert. I have another thing that I want to show you, but we can say that at this moment I have the visitor design pattern applied. So we have our employee structure isolated from the behaviors itself. And when the HR department needs a new feature, I don't need to touch those classes and I can introduce new behaviors by adding a new class. So I'm respecting the open closed principle. But I want to show you two other things that you can do with .NET if you wish. The first one is regarding this interface where we have to define for each type of leaf node one method of visit that then will need to be implemented. This is one of the advantages of this design pattern because it implies an exhaustive check. But what if I want to implement a visitor that is just for manager? Let's say that we are creating a report visitor that will be reporting the manager capacity based on the team size. What you will need to do is to implement the I employee visitor. By doing that, you need to implement all those methods for different types that don't apply to the concept of manager. Obviously, you can remove the source code from here and nothing will happen. But with the latest versions of .NET, you can do that in a different way. So let's remove this one from here. In the latest versions of .NET, you can take advantage of the default implementations for interfaces and do something as simple as this. Now, if my visitor doesn't implement one of those methods, it will just go into this implementation and do nothing. On our implementation of the visitor, now it's not complaining and I simply implement the visit method that I want. Not saying that I like this approach, but it's something that you can do with the latest versions of .NET. The other thing that I want to talk about is about this accept method that we need to override on the software engineer, engineer manager, everywhere. And it doesn't look very smart because we are simply calling this visitor.visit and sending the current instance. Why can't we do that on the base class? Let's try it. Let's go into our employee and convert this abstract method into a virtual and we will call on the visitor, the visit method and provide the current instance. But now the compiler is complaining because at this moment I'm on my employee that is the base class 
and I don't know on this this which type of method should I call. But this logic of knowing which type of leaf node I'm handling is really important to that double dispatch that we talked about. But in .NET, you can do one smart thing to avoid this. That is using the dynamic keyword. So by doing this, you are moving the moment of the decision from compile time into the runtime. So if you are willing to pay the price of using the dynamic here, is a smart thing to do because now I can go to all those classes and remove the accept method and I don't need to implement it again. So you remove it from everywhere. I hope that now you have a clear picture of when to use this design pattern and why it exists. And hopefully you find this video worth sharing and you share it with your team. And by the way, please let me know in the comments if you ever use this design pattern and which type of problem you have been solving with it. And if you like this video, I think you will like this one right here, where I also talk about the design pattern on how to refactor c -sharp code with the chain of responsibility pattern. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.